Hello, my name is Father James Kelleher, and I'm a priest in the Society of Our Lady of the Most Holy Trinity. And I'm the founder and director of Eucharistic Family Rosary Crusade. And I do Rosary Crusades all over the United States, England, Ireland, and Central America. Today I'd like to talk to you about a great Marian Eucharistic saint, Saint John Bosco. Saint John Bosco lived in Turin, Italy. He was born in 1815 and he died in 1888. There's certain things we can learn from St. John Bosco, who his nickname was Don Bosco, so that's how I mainly referred to him. Things we can learn from Don Bosco about the Eucharist and how we can allow the Eucharist to transform us, to make us saints, to give us a desire to do everything with the love of Jesus, for the love of Jesus. And so when John was a boy, he actually had a dream where he saw all these street boys who were imprisoned and they were being mistreated. And John's heart was moved that he wanted to help these boys to come to know Jesus. Don Bosco was ordained a priest and he saw all these street boys in, in Turin, Italy. And so he, met, he went out and met them and he saw that they loved sports and Don Bosco was a good athlete himself. And so he challenged them to sporting feats to races and he would beat them, to climb a tree and he would get to the highest point on the tree and beat their best tree climber. And he also could perform different magic tricks. And so the boys, they wanted to see John Bosco do these things, but Don Bosco would always make them pray before and pray after he did these amazing feats. And eventually he was able to build a home for them where they could come and live and learn a trade. But what was really happening were they were learning the faith because he taught them how to make their first confession. He taught them to make their first communion. And so the life of the boys was a life centered on Jesus in the Eucharist. Don Bosco made himself available for confession 24 hours a day. And so these boys were constantly receiving the mercy of the Lord so that they could start again and get a fresh start. And they had the daily mass so the young people could receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And then Don Bosco had them learn different trades so that these young men could go out and get jobs and provide for themselves and eventually earn enough money that they could get married and have a family. What can we learn from Don Bosco here? We want to learn that frequent confession is an important part of our preparation for receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. The greater the mercy of God we receive, the greater love we bring to receiving Jesus in the Eucharist so that we can let Jesus transform our mind, let Jesus strengthen our will, and let Jesus fill us with a desire to be one with him. And we also can learn from Don Bosco that we can take all these graces received in the Eucharist and then go forth in whatever our vocation in life is, whatever our profession is, and we can give our best to the Lord. And we can let our Lord develop our gifts for his honor and glory. And so our reception of Jesus in the Eucharist is, connects with every aspect of our life. Jesus wants to touch us 24 hours a day. And the more we come to know him in the Eucharist, the more we can surrender our life to him, to let him teach us, to let him strengthen us, to let him transform us. Now I'd like to tell you a story about one of Don Bosco's students. His name was Dominic Savio. When Dominic was only 12 and 13 years old, he was there living at Don Bosco's home for the orphaned. Dominic Savio, he liked to go into the church at different times of the day and just pray in front of the Blessed Sacrament. And of course, he liked to go to Mass every day and receive Jesus in communion. Well, what happened? Some of the boys became curious about Dominic Savio was doing uh, all the time when he would go in and pray in the chapel during the breaks. And they began to, so one day they walked in there and Dominic Savio was levitating like 10 feet off the ground as he contemplated the ta Jesus in the tabernacle. And this happened more than once. And so the people, the young, other young people began to realize that St. Dominic Savio had a very special union with the Lord. And it was not long after that that the Lord called Dominic Savio home. And so now 
Dominic Savio became a, a hero saint for the other boys. They could emulate his virtue. They could practice his love for Jesus in the Eucharist, of making visits during the day to come and thank Jesus, to come to talk with Jesus, to let Jesus direct their life. And then they understood that for Dominic Savio, the Eucharist was everything. And so many boys were able to pattern themselves after Dominic Savio and grows, grow in the ways of sanctity. St. John Bosco, um, as he developed, he realized he needed to found a religious order that could sustain his work. Where was he going to get the priests to run this order? Well, he realized that he was already giving great spiritual formation to these young boys. And so it was many of these young boys that went through his formation program that became the first Salesian priests. And one of them, Father Michael Rua, became Don Bosco's top assistant. And when God called Don Bosco home, Michael Rua became the next Father General of the order, the Salesian order that Don Bosco founded. We see that for Don Bosco, the Eucharist was everything. That's why he made himself available 24-7 to hear the confessions of his, of his boys. Don Bosco would do anything and everything to help them get close to Jesus. That's why he provided daily mass for the boys. You and I, in our own life, we can do everything possible to get to communion as often as possible. We can make sacrifices to do this. Sometimes we might have to get up early to be able to get to a mass and still get to work. But when we make that sacrifice, the Lord rewards us a hundredfold. Let us let Don Bosco speak to our hearts. Let us ask Don Bosco to give us strength to walk the way of Christ, to live a Eucharistic life every moment of the day. Ave Maria.